What's up guys? Um my name well this is Suxigato Gaming and just to let you know we're gonna be doing a visual novel today. Um Sepia Tears. I'm gonna be making this into a long series and I'm going to be doing a couple other games and like pretty much everything you could probably find on Steam because I finally got my other recorder to work. So that's a good thing. Um I I'm going to go ahead and put this to full screen real quick. Okay, we're all set. Um, I just want to say, we're going to go ahead and start. Oh, I'm so excited. You've heard of the Mayfly? Oh my god. Screwed up already. Oh well. You know what? One cut, one cut. Um, you've heard of the <laughs> Mayfly, right? <laughs> It's one of those old winter days when the snow is falling, but it, it but it isn't cold. Either late November or the beginning of December, right around the time when the dollar stores start playing Christmas music and the couples go skating. One of those odd winter evenings, the same old 3 p.m. through the lens of a classroom window. I would describe the muted texture of the light through the glass, but it it's become all too familiar. It'd be like a raven about the miracle of flowers blooming in spring. The novelty's gone. Chairs screech against tile floor and students chatter all around, but the sounds follow me weightless. The mayfly, the bug that lives on for only a day once it grows its wings. It's a great metaphor. You must have seen it before. My mind wanders sometimes. It's like being stuck in a room with a TV set to local news, almost muted, not quite, or like reading a boring web page because you're too lazy to click away. Having a voice in your head that won't shut up, it used to bother me, but I can handle it now. Listen to music on the way home, play a video game before you go to bed, kill time in any way you can, and it won't be so loud. Ever wonder why they even bother? It's simple, really. You pick up your books, stand up, put your gloves as you walk through the early one to chill. Get home, make a snack, relax, and let the process repeat itself. Life is the easiest thing in the world when you think about it. But sometimes memories resurface. The horrible red-brown that it croaches on my vision, creeping from a box locked safely away. Oh, it's cold. I had a nose before, but it looks like it's snowing. Was I out for that long? I was walking home from school a moment ago, I'm sure. Or is this a dream? That would make sense. But then why am I wearing my school uniform? And why is my wallet in my pocket? Well, that doesn't prove anything. But might as well roll with it. It seriously picks black here. I can make out the snowflakes just fine, but nothing seems to be lighting them. I better start moving before I freeze to... Ah! That light, it's... You've come. You. Thank you for coming to see me. It's lonely here, you know. Lonely? Yeah, I can't deny that. It's a peaceful prison trapped in her darkness under this soft snowfall. But it's a prison. What's the matter? Are you glad to see me? I... She looks familiar, I'm sure of it. The memory teases me like a vivid, lucid dream, but I can't grab hold of it. It's been such a long time, I thought you would have been ecstatic. Ah, ah. I open my mouth, but words are lost. 
The more I search for the memory, the more her eyes bewitch me. As snowflakes lands on a girl hair, I force the first words out of my mouth. Who are you? Do you really not remember me? What a shame. We have so much to catch up on. Her smile is confident, mysterious, somewhere between angelic and doll-like. There's nothing to worry about. After all, we have all the time in the world. So then, who are you? She looks me in the eye and my heart stops. I'm the person you wish you never met. She embraces me and my senses freeze until the color strikes my eye against the monochrome backdrop. Hanging in the stillness, a red ribbon drifts from the side of her hair. And on the inside of that ribbon, something is written. But just as fantastic as that is the fact that the words are scrambled, blurred, even though my eyes are only inches from it. That ribbon, don't you remember? It was your... Her voice fades away. I glance at the ribbon again, but before I can move closer, my stomach flips upside down. <laughs> the girl's warm fades from my arms. <laughs> Is she disappearing? I'm, this, this whole world is. A knife pierces my heart as I realize something. It's not this world that's disappearing. It's me. I just want to say this is really well written. I want to say this is a really well written novelty that we're going to be going through. And I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys enjoy this, I'm going to try my best to do voice acting towards the best I can for this series. For reading all this, put as much feeling as I can into this. So, yeah. Let's go ahead. Day one reunion. Unisha. Unisha, are you up? That sounds familiar. Mark, we're going to be late. Ah! Are you even listening to me? Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Jeez, it wouldn't kill you to be a little more gentle. <laughs> gentle? Gentle, but I'm your cute little sister. I'm automatically gentle. That's like saying I'm automatically dependable because I'm your older brother. Wait. See? If you're not that the dependable sibling you're supposed to be, that gives me the legal right to find new and exciting ways to tease you. Okay, that's fair. Point taken. And who was it that wrote this law? More importantly, I have history tests this morning, so I'll leave you behind if I have to. Pouting my diligently evil little sister runs down the stairs. Can't she find a more normal form of torture? <sighs> ah. It's bright out. Pleasantly bright. I can get lost just looking at that pale blue sky, although I fear the cold that accompanies it. So this is why I hate winter. Nature has no mercy for the northern hemisphere. Actually, does that make a chance? I'm sorry, does that make a difference? Technically, every country has to be part of a hemisphere, so there must be warm regions in the northern hemisphere. And even so, the southern hemisphere will be 
Mark, I've been working on my hook toe shinken, and I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted because it's, it's a net flying around. It's kind of bothering me a little. I don't know how it got in. I think it's because of the AC in the window. It's a space over there. It probably came in from outside. Oh, the, oh my God. The last time she tried this, <laughs> I shudder to think about it. I'm pretty sure I know who my next practice subject will be if you make me fail my test. God, please no. Is it usually practice partner, not practice subject? So that's my sister, Rena. Since she started at my school life has been hell. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration. She's a nice girl and all. She takes care of me, makes me lunch, forces me to buy her stuff. And see what I mean? I'm out of compliments already. And that threat certainly wasn't the first. Ouch. Stupid razor. That was supposed to show me how to use this thing. Anyway. Ren is a strange girl, to put it nicely. She always rattles on about these crazy robot wars and melodramatic love stories that she watches, trying to find new and exciting ways to pull into her world. I haven't figured out why she calls me Unique Sean yet, though. Is that ironic? Ironically unironic? Ironic because she thinks I'll think it's subtly ironically unironic? I can only conclude that it's part of some devious scheme that I have yet to catch wind of. The tip of the iceberg, so to speak. If the iceberg were, to, were a blood-related little sister. But as much as I like to criticize her, I can't complain. She still does better than me at school. Alright, I'm almost done. But as much as I like to criticize her, I can't... I'm sorry about that. Oh, and she's also does a better job of cooking and buzzing it than me and she never sleeps in and the only time she's late for class is when I hold her back now do you see what life is her is hell good morning did you sleep well if you if anyone watches this and you comment in the comment section if you want me to attempt to do a female voice for Ren I will attempt it but only if someone comments and says so. I slept perfectly fine until I was awakened by a certain someone. How can you say that? How can you say that you should be thankful to have a cute girl like me wake up every morning? You're not supposed to call yourself cute. Is that because we're related? Is it because we're blood related and you're... That's not why. I mean, it's a little vain, don't you think? And it's not very cute. True. But what if I'm only doing it to unnerve you? Good point. Well, I do have to thank you for keeping me on my toes all the time. You're like my mother, is what I want to say. But I imagine her twitching smile and my life flashes before my eyes. So, Ren, you have a test this morning. Yep. I did a quick review with my friends yesterday, so don't you don't need to worry about it. I wasn't worried. Oh, is that your way of hiding your affection? Was that even remotely implied? I'm sure you'll pass the test. I just want to make sure you don't forget anything and end up failing up for some stupid reason. Like that time I accidentally brought my Game Boy instead of my calculator? Yes. Yes, like that time. I was only 12. It was an innocent mistake. Only 12? Regardless, you get what I'm saying. Just don't screw up. <laughs> 